Hello and welcome to the tutorial video here where I'm going to show you how we can make some lovely 3D box cards. And over the course of the video, um, I'll give you the variations and everything that you're going to find on the CD and some sort of hints and tips along the way to perhaps make it a little bit more interesting. Now to make the box, you can choose any paper that you like. And this again is a serving suggestion. I've printed dark on one side and then the lighter colors here. Now. This will be the inside of the box, and obviously we've got the construction lines here. Now they won't really show when it's put together, but I wanted you to be able to see them when I put the box together. So you could actually put them over this side here on the darker side, or if you've got the template as well, you, you could use that. But um, running it through the printer on that side, which will be the back of the box, they won't be obviously as noticeable as on the inside. But I've done this so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, so I've printed it out. We've got our red lines are our cut lines, black lines are our score lines. So with a trusty craft knife, now at this point you could quite happily use a guillotine and just slice it off. It's all nice and square, just a trimmer if you wanted to, just to get rid of the edges. Now I've printed edge to edge, but I've designed this so that even if your printer doesn't print edge to edge, um, most of the major printers will come a couple of mils short of this line, so you don't have to worry. It doesn't have to be edge-to-edge -edge printing. It's designed specifically to work on all of the printers, so you will be okay, I trust. Right, so that's that. So again, I'm just following the plan here. The red lines are cut lines, so while I've got my knife out, I will cut this. And I'll show you the pattern here because basically you can almost ignore that upright line. I decided it was better just having a small triangle. It was less noticeable. So if I cut that piece away, you can see you can ignore that line if you want to. And so again, just work my way through all four panels and ignoring the other line, I'll just come straight down to create that. If you want to have a square holding it together, then by all means um, do that, but you'll have to come down on another line. But uh, yep, see, I don't need that one. <laughs> Cut it out, that one's done. And again here, last one at least, these are my red lines. So cut to there. Can you use scissors if you want to? Whoops, I'm just using my craft knife. I'm trying to keep out of the camera's way there, and I've just gone a little astray, but that'll be all right. It won't show. We end up with our basic shape now, like so. Next thing to do, I'm going to use my tool here and just score all of the dotted lines. I'm going to do the uprights first, down there, and just, yeah, feel I've done those, and come back and do that one. And then it's these ones here. These need to be really nicely creased because we're going to make the box back to front and then squeeze it in. So it does pay to make sure you've got nice lines on there. And I'll chat about that in a moment because we're going to sort of what I call a double fold backwards and forwards. Remember, I've done it in theory the other way round, but you'll see when this comes together, most of these will just disappear. You won't see that they're there. So that's all done. Simply fold the crease lines. Just get a basic crease in, basic fold. We can come back and add to that. I just find placing the ruler down just helps to give me a guide as to where I am. Again, just you can see, just put the ruler there and fold that. And this is just the starting off. And now again, the same with these ones here. Just put a nice crease in those. And in there. And come back and pop one in there. Okay, so that's what our basic shape is looking like. At this stage, you could use a bone folder and just come back and put some nice, good, solid creases in there. This will just help the box fold 
and work a lot better. Uh, those are our flaps for the side, so again, a good crease in there and here. Now, these ones are going to fold that way, but they also have to fold back the other way, so it's a good idea to crease them back on themselves at this stage. So I said, we're going to make the box sort of inside out, not all of it. It's a bit misleading, but you'll, you'll see what I mean. So again, a good crease there, because we're going to pop the box back in the other way. And I will reveal all in a couple of seconds. So they're, they're creased both ways, that, that's important. Back we come now, and it's gluing time. Now we can glue this box together. Saying that, at this point, you've got a couple of options. Now one is to actually pop your image in at this stage here if you want to. But I find if we're folding and popping things around, um, it's probably not the best time. And if you want to do the stack stackage, which I've got on this one, then I would be tempted just to build that up and just slot the thing in afterwards. But I mentioned that if you've got one layer, you could quite happily pop it in now at this stage. But while you've got the image, do make sure that everything folds nicely. Sometimes just the score lines, we can be a few millimetres out. And on this one, I have actually just trimmed the sides down a little bit to allow it to, to fit. So it's not a bad thing at this time and it offers a good opportunity to come back and just check that that is going to fit in there. So that's what I would recommend. I'm going to just take that out for the time being. Um, and also if I can mention that if we are going to build a box that looks like this with the layer on, that we've got to allow for the tab as well. And it would be at this stage that we'll cut this off and create the tab. Now I'm going to go on and make the box now, but I'm only going to use temporary glue here and I'm going to pull it to part and then show you the second alternative method for making it if we're using the tab. Okay, so glue time. Now you can use one of these, but I suggest a good wet glue. Um, anything will do. We've got three in one, which works pretty well, and the Cosmic Shimmer. I like the Cosmic Shimmer. It's pretty fast. So that would be my choice there. And what we're going to do is just glue the tabs. Now I'm going to start up here and just use my glue, as I said, a good wet glue. It's not under a massive amount of strain, but it, it's worth doing. Now we fold that over to there, we pull this one down, and then we just fold that like so. It's a bit like origami making the frog. You can see that just goes down there on that side. And we would do the same for here with our glue, but because I want to pull this pass shortly, I'm going to just use a temporary glue here. So same technique, pull that over to there, along that crease line, and that will just fit naturally along the side of the box there. Can you see that? And we've got our first crease in there. So again, what we can do now is just pull this one right the way over so it lines up like so. And as we've done before, use our wet glue like so, and then just pull that down. Ha! Might as well, yeah, pull that down. I thought I'd done it wrong then, but we're okay. Onto there like so. Those two are just sitting upright. Just fold that back, you can see there, but I'll keep that out of the way. And again, glue this side. You can use permanent. I'm using a temporary, because as I said, I do want to pull this apart in a mo. That glues on the side of the box there. If we just close it like so. And there we go. That's our box, as we can see. And if we pull it open, you can see we've got the basic box short forming there. Now, I said it was back to for an inside out box. And by that, I meant we can see this way we can glue it without trying to glue it into a box shape. It's flat. Everything's done flat because it's the wrong way round. So at this point, we've got to reverse it and make this start to go inwards. And this is why it's important you've got some really nice crease lines because you can see it is going to put up a little bit of a fight. Now, if I can show you here, I'm just going to begin to fold that down and just 
get those crease lines there like so. And if you can see that, I'll just show you on the camera. Once you can see that starts to fold there, that can come down like so. And same again here. You can see I'm going to push that in that way. And that's why it was so important to put some nice tight crease lines. So just push it right over. You can kind of feel it bend and go in like so. And that will now just come down like that. And there we go. That is our box like so. If I open it up, we can see we've got our lovely 3D box card. It really is that simple. Now, as I said, at this stage, we can go ahead and pop in our image. Now we've checked that it fits in there, a little bit of glue on it, and you can pop that in. And we've got that the basis for that there. If you want to do the stack of parge, do it. It's easier to do it, obviously, when it isn't in there, and we can build that up as well. So I'm just going to pop this out. It's going to fight me there for a second, because the other thing we can do um, is put in a floating image. As I've mentioned, we can stack a page these uh, on the CD, where they're there, or even do the uh, decoupage. Now you'll notice what we're trying to do is keep everything away from the edges as much as possible, um, because otherwise when the mechanism folds, it catches on it. But you will notice that we can put tabs, and these are already pre-prepared for you. So what I'm gonna do now is basically cut this out. But just before I do that, I'm just gonna point out to you, you can see that those are our 10 mil gluing tabs either side there. And you'll notice there's always a little white line because we have to do a z, what I call a Z fold down through here and through there as well. So I'll go on and cut this and do all the folding. And then that will be ready to go back into the box. But just before I do that, I'm going to take this to bits and just show you how we do the special cuts underneath as well. OK, so I'll go ahead and do this now. OK, I've cut the tab out and I've done a crease. Now, I've used photo paper here, so you have to be a bit careful. And I've just put a crease in there, a crease in there, one here. And this is the hard one to do here. Now, I've used my scoring tool and just very gently score, but you've got to be careful because you can take off the surface of the photo paper. So what I would suggest as well, just hold the ruler. And if you can get another one underneath, that's great. If you've got two rulers and just bend it this way and just create your crease there. I'm going to go backwards on that and just, you can see, just bend that like so. And that now will give us what we call our Z fold. So I'm going to bring that one back like so. Make sure that's folded there. And then the same on here, that will be going like so. And it just folds back on itself to create what we call the Z fold. Whoops, that one's got to go that away. No, I'm right, that way, that way there, that way there. And then these will just fit in and they'll fold as we create the rest of the box. Now, the tab will go into here, but before we can do that, if we put it in now, as we fold this, these lines here will just crunch and crease and just jam in. It'll look awful and horrible. So what we've got to do is, if you are going to do the tab, is not, well, get to the stage that you've made up the box, but we're gonna to have to redo this bit. Now I'll show you. What I mean, now I didn't glue this, do you remember? So if you cast your mind back, what you would have done is, is glued the box like I showed you. Do you remember we had the bits sticking out and it was looking like this? I would just do the two top halves and then leave that like so, because this bit you're going to chop off, which to be honest, seems quite scary, doesn't it? You're gonna just slice that bit right off the base there. There we go. And that leaves you with this part here. And that part is what we're going to glue again, but because we've got a tab, the tab's about 10 millimeters in. Now, I would measure about, you could start off with five and we'll just cut it right the way across. What we want to do is leave enough room to allow everything to 
fit and fold but so that you don't see the line underneath as well okay so what we've got to do is glue this back again and probably the easiest way is to fold it down and have it looking like that and then this first one will just stick back I go at 90 degrees there and just so it just touches there and then that crease is just coming in underneath there like so rub that in there that's our first one and then that's just all going to swing round pop that down there you can see the line here and again a little bit of glue wet glue it'll try and break away and you can see oops, our basic shape there it's looking like that so I've put my glue on there and bring that up to that side fold that down and we're back to where we were when we did the box last time a couple of seconds just to let that dry a bit for you and if I just pull it open we can see the difference is we've now got a gap here and this will allow the mechanism to open and close and so what we've got to do again is just reverse that box if you remember just push that one in there push that one in there and down it goes and there we go that's our box opening like that so the next thing to do is to come back now and pop this in now before I do that I'm just going to pop my base image down on the card there and we just need to glue the tabs here and here now this isn't going to look perfect but it's an interesting technique Again, this is going to take a bit of time to dry because we've now got photo paper. If you're working with card, it's a thin card and the thinner the paper, the better if you can with this. This is just a wee bit thick, but it's all I've got left. Um, so I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to tip the box on its side here and just line that up towards the bottom there and with the bottom of the box, like so. Oops, that's moving everywhere just trying to do it so you can see it on the camera and get it to stick as well so I'm just going to hold that in position but if you get the gist that comes down to the bottom and sticks there as well that will need a little bit of time so because it's photo paper it doesn't want to stick too happily while it's doing that I'm going to pull this out pop a little bit of glue on it slot it back in because that wasn't helping stick that down and I said let that side dry nicely and while that's drying pop a little bit of glue on the other side like so on that tab again a good wet glue it's more than recommended and we'll just pop that one in as well so that's going to come down if I can again just show you on the camera sorry it's a it's a tricky one to see and a tricky one to do as well just pop that in there and if I just show you that, just that's going down, just sticking. And I'll just tilt that up, and you can see now that's just stuck in the corner, like so. And now, as we open it up, you can see we've got our sort of floating 3D layer there. So it does look very, very effective. Okay, so that's how we would put those layers in otherwise said so just concentrate on doing like the stack equipage off the CD or even the decoupage as well now there's one more thing that we've got on there that we can add as well and that's we can put our trusty danglies on it as well if I just show you this I'm just going to pop him in now, I probably wouldn't have him on this card because there's probably a little bit too much going on but all I'm doing is sticking the element in there I've used a little bit of nylon cord and that will just hang in the box and jiggle about as it's opened and closed. So that gives you another element. Obviously, that's blocking the main image. But there on the CD, and I just thought, the chance to show you how we would use that. Um, and the beauty of this is you can put anything in the boxes that you want. Now, you'll notice on the CD, you also get what I call these squares. Now, once we make the card, you can decorate the front any way you like it's like a traditional card now but on the cd i've given you whoops, some extra elements there and these squares will just cut in half now they're 11 mil by 10.3 so you just got to draw in a line there at 55 mil and then you can 
cut these in half. Now I've done one I prepared earlier on and I'm just going to come down to there like so and I've created the opening flap here. Now you can obviously decorate with whatever you like. I'm using these rather marvellous all occasion dies. They're mine so I'm quite proud of those um, and I've just used the happy and the Christmas here in the alphabet to spell out mum and dad there. And uh, watch this space, there are Christmas ones coming soon as well. But that is just a serving suggestion for you. You can decorate it anyhow you like. And if I just come back to one I prepared earlier on, again, a similar card here, and I've just put Happy Christmas in green, just matching the trees down here. Again, I've used my old occasion dies. Uh, it just adds a little bit of extra oomph to it, I think. So what we've got to do then is just pop that on to the front cover. And in this instance, I'm just going to use a trusty glue pen here, pop a little bit of glue on, and I'll just glue those both up now while we're doing it. Now, the nice thing about these squares is you'll find that I've tried to get them so they mix and match with everything that we've got on the CD. They'll find a little bit of something there for you. I'm just going to put this one the right way up. <laughs> um, Okay, so just lining that up with the edge there. And as I said, you could, it's really just a case of matte and layering. You can keep the edge here. You could even put some mirror board behind it. I mean, this is the lovely thing. We're just working as though we're creating a traditional card here. And again, I'll just match that up to there like so. I think that one could probably have come over a wee bit more, but I think we're pretty well there. And there we go. So that's my my front cover. And that, we can see, just hides our card there. So we've got Mum and Dad, Happy Christmas. And a lovely, lovely surprise inside there. And you can see, although we can see the, the cut underneath, very often that just doesn't show up once we've got our card open. It's hard to show you here, but you can see now at this angle that you can't see that little line underneath. And you've got a really, I think, a really lovely card, smashing card there. Now, another little thing, we've got a lot of layers here and it's quite concertinery. So to keep the surprise and the suspense going, I always recommend just popping a little bit of ribbon over it. That um, looks quite nice and just can help keep the card closed like so. And that will just help so that you don't have too much of the surprise given away keep the card there it's obvious that there's something happening underneath there but it's a nice I think finishing touch and then we've got that lovely card if you want to as well don't forget we've got the back panels here and you could always hand write or just pop a little message on or type something in and, and stick it down if you're working with the templators as well um, remember everything's on the cd here but you may have bought the template as well this works well because you can use it on all sorts of papers um, you could use that as your guideline just to make a little panel up if you wanted to um, using that section there and, and cut something out or just just measure up and and drop something in there for a greetings message but what we do have is a really lovely lovely card and now working with other images, we can create these lovely cards like so. So here again, I've used the all occasion dice to get happy birthday 50 today. And then use the petty petals here just to create the flowers. Again, this is just a serving suggestion. You can use whatever you like on there. OK, so those are our cards. That's how we make them. They're nice and simple. They don't take long to do at all. We can see just variation on the theme here. I come back, we've just put a few gems on, some stars. I've used a different backing paper and I've um, put I said it, the, the all occasion dies here to say Happy Christmas. And I've got the stackipage in the back there. Now, you probably wouldn't do the stackipage and the layer here, but that's to show you again how we can use it. Just a serving suggestion with our cards. But um, I think you'll agree it does make a different, unusual and rather nice card and that will just sit square up on the mantelpiece somewhere as well, taking pride of place. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial video and it's given you the confidence to go on and make the 3D box cards on your own. As you can see, it really is very, very simple and only a few things, just a couple of points to remind you. We keep the uh, image area 
as I say, the decoupage in the middle. The stackopage works well, because again, that just keeps everything away from the creases. It just enables the cards to fold flat. Uh, working with a template, you've got loads and loads of versatility. You can use any backing papers that you want. You're not just limited to, to any one thing. And I always think it's worth exploring the, the bits that hang as well, and we could combine those. The tab that runs along the front um, is an interesting one, but it is a little bit tricky. And I think it's a it's a call, it's your call as the crafter whether or not you want to use it. I've put it in there, um, but I do appreciate that it is a little bit tricky to use. It Sometimes it adds something to the card, sometimes it doesn't. So if you never want to use it, don't worry. You know, but it is, it's there if you need it. But that aside, the rest of it shall, will work absolutely beautifully for you. They are very, very simple to make, and I think they look quite special as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, as I've said, and that you're now happy enough to go on and start making some 3D box cards of your own. Okie dokie, enjoy your crafting. Bye-bye.